Man, Playboy Cardi, aka King Vamp, has a growing list of ops from Australian baby mamas to petty hairstylists to pregnant women. It seems like there's a trend of hitting on the opium final boss. However, it seems like the biggest ops of all are members of the 5L henchmen, most notably Benji Bluebells and Ola Runt, who Cardi took the time to personally name drop and disses multiple times. He even dissed Benji on one of his newest tracks, You're the Moon, where he says, yeah, yeah, I was looking for Benji. On the surface, it seems like this is just a, you know, normal rap competition, causing rising artists in the city of Atlanta to feud for clout. However, when digging deeper, you'll realize that the ongoing beef between the 5L henchmen and the DTE homicide gang is a tragic story with bloodshed occurring on both sides and with no end in sight, man. We gotta talk about the shocking war in Atlanta and the beef that took the lives of several people and resulted in many others being locked behind bars right now. But before we do, man, you already know what we're gonna have to do, man. Like, comment, subscribe. We're on the road to 100K subscribers. Make sure you hit that notification bell so whenever I post, y'all are tuned in right away, man. It's 2024. And we're gonna stay tapped in with this and hit that link in the bio for the merch at staysafeworld.com. Let's get into this. And you know that we gotta start from the jump. Chapter one, you know the come up is real. To better understand the ongoing situation in Atlanta, you have to rewind back in time, way before this coming normal era of Cardi. Way before Problem Child 5 was locked up. Way before the deaths of Big Sosa and R5. We gotta go back to the very beginning. When Playboy Cardi was becoming a well-known rapper. Making a name for himself across the world as a member of OG. As you know by now, Playboy Cardi, aka Jordan Carter, is not from Zone 6 era of Atlanta. However, he somehow ended up being in the streets posted up with a group that was infamous for having deep ties in the Atlanta underworld, DTE, or duct tape entertainment as they say. DTE is a crazy group that had ties to legends in the Atlanta scenes and streets like Future and Trouble. It's crazy, at one point, Future even signed DTE's alleged serial killer shooter Problem Child 5, who apparently has five bodies that he's currently fighting in jail. The group seemingly named after kidnapping ninjas was a loose group of bloods that had a chokehold in the music industry based out of the Edgewood area of Atlanta's Zone 6. One of Playboy Cardi's closest friends growing up was a rising DTE member by the name of Big Sosa, who we'll talk about later, but the ties with him essentially got him grouped up with top DTE members like Big Bank and essentially got him tied in with Homicide, Big Bang being the CEO of Duct Tape Entertainment. Many feel that these ties are not genuine and the members of this group are basically just forcing him to pay for protection at this time in his career because Playboy Cardi wasn't seen as a gangster rapper. In fact, he even made it a point to say that he was a quote unquote pretty boy that wasn't into the violence and death associated with gang life. However, Video footage from what looks like the mid 2010s shows Cardi posted up with DTE members on the block and archive footage shows a lot of footage of Cardi with Big Bang aka the CEO of Duct Tape Entertainment where all moves go through him. At the same time though, there was another allegedly blood group from the same area of Atlanta with close ties to the members of DTE coming up slowly making waves in the industry called the henchman, AKA 5L, some of the biggest ops in Atlanta. And his biggest member was Ola Run, who had close ties with the OG Big Bang from DTE. At the beginning though, they were all cool. There's even pictures of them posted up, many pictures. At that time, Atlanta did not seem to have the crazy beefs that carried over to the internet today. Sure, people had individual problems with each other, but just cause someone so had a problem with, you know, another person in another group, the majority of the group wasn't turning the issue into a full on war. However, several incidents over the course of several years 
eventually turned a once peaceful relationship into an all out war. And we're gonna get into that right now in this next chapter on what went left. So let's see what's up. Being rappers from the same side of Atlanta obviously comes with a degree of expectations. Younger artists are expected to reach out and basically pay respects to the OGs, especially if they come from your area. Ola Runt was on the come up and caught the attention of Atlanta legend Gucci Man with his track Feel Like Gua. He was even rumored to have signed with Gucci Man when he was given a 1017 chain. But it turned out to be a misunderstanding and Ola later clarified that he decided to sign to Creative Music Group. This was many points of contention that probably had Big Bank feeling some way. There was rumors that Big Bank and Gucci Man were not cool and had a lot of problems. You see, Bank also being from the area that Ola Runt was from felt that Ola Runt should have signed to DTE to keep the wealth in that area. As many people feel coming out of the hood, you wanna try to keep the wealth in your own area. Even though he didn't sign to Gucci Man actually, because he said that the deal didn't feel right, he ended up signing to a different creative music group, which definitely rubbed Big Bank the wrong way. This led to Ola Runt dropping his infamous diss, taking shots at Big Bank and his son, Lil DTE, in the song Mob Bother. Shortly after this, a now infamous incident took place at Lenox Square Mall when Ola Runt was arrested. He then screamed that it was Big Bank responsible for calling the police on him. and accusing Bank of being a snitch. One thing that's super crazy to note is Ola Runt was actually taken down in a crazy gang sweep called Operation Phoenix. Step in the effort today with the arrest of what's being called some of the most dangerous criminals operating in Atlanta. Fox Eyes Morris Diggs was there for the announcement and has the details. Operation Phoenix. The bottom line is there are gonna be consequences for committing violent crimes in Atlanta. And where we believe that it's necessary and warranted, we will do everything in our power to bring federal charges. And here are a dozen of the men, not kids, who are in federal custody or are being sought. Law enforcement officers labeled them among the most dangerous individuals allegedly responsible for violence in the city. That essentially got him locked up for causing a huge spike in Atlanta gang activity, but it was never confirmed whether or not Big Bank had something to do with this. Big Bank later went on live and called Ola Runt broke, and then Ola Run for some reason took the time to go on the internet and diss a close associate of Big Bank and a parent serial killer, Problem Child 5. Hey, hey. And problem child, your daddy name Big O. Big O is a preacher. Y'all, Big O is a preacher, man, man. Big O is a preacher and he's a chef. He cooked food, no dope. Y'all heard me. My father cooked dope. Y'all heard me. Your father cooked food, nigga. You talking about? This is where it all starts to go downhill for real. We gotta tap in though, because Problem Child 5 has a very pivotal role in this instance. And we gotta explain his whole background because it ties in with a lot of the madness that sort of went down. So we gotta tap in with chapter three, the rise of Problem Child 5. Problem Child 5 is a crazy rapper from the Edgewood area of Atlanta with deep ties to Homicide Gang and DTE. At one point, Future decided to sign him because they apparently had a really close relationship. Speaking on it, Problem Child 5 said that Future was basically like a father figure throughout his life. Obviously, not the best of father figures if you're going around killing five people, but you know, it's better than having no father figure. Bruh, imagine signing an apparent mass murderer. Anyways, apparently dude Due to his close ties to DTE, he became the subject of a fried rant where Ola Runt said P5 was actually a good child from a great upbringing and that his dad was a pastor and a chef. It just goes to say how fried the situation was because bro was trying to make fun of a known apparent serial killer because he had apparently a good upbringing. This led to him dropping a henchman diss track PP's son where he raps about catching a henchman slipping. But tragedy soon struck when a member of Homicide Gang unfortunately died in a wild situation that was right next to Problem Child 5 that forever changed the structure of gangs in Atlanta Zone 6 forever. Man, we gotta talk about what went down with Big Sosa, the shootout that changed everything. Chapter 4. 
Up until this point, everything going on with this beef was either just on the internet or in songs. Many felt that it was over exaggerated street ninjas flexing on the internet until one incident went down that apparently changed the streets of Atlanta forever. During the pandemic, in June 2020, Problem Child 5 and Big Sosa apparently pulled up to a dice game that unfortunately turned sour. A shootout commenced. Big Sosa, the close friend of P5 and Playboy Cardi, who Playboy Cardi shouted out multiple times, was gunned down. P5 claimed to have left the scene when the shooting occurred, but then shortly after, Ola Runt and henchmen like 24 Left Eye began dissing Sosa in retaliation for the fallen homicide member. And you see him geek. The Sosa is on me. Happy motherfucking birthday. We're going up all fucking day. Sosa in the air all fucking day. Let's go. It's not known if 5L, the henchman, has something to do with this. But the way that they were dissing and the way that they were basically saying that it was their issue, it kind of, you know, read that they might have had something to do with it. Apparently, shortly after this, though, all this dissing caught up to them when 24 Left Eye was caught lacking and shot multiple times for dissing Sosa, allegedly by members of DTE. It's crazy. Lil One DTE even went on IG Live to talk about the incident and basically implied that he knew something about it. And that definitely didn't go over well with members of henchmen. And at that current time in the general world outside Atlanta, no one really knew about this ongoing war that was happening in Zone 6. However, everything changed when Playboy Cardi dropped his infamous song stop breathing where he talked about the death of his homie sosa and getting deeper into the streets he also rapped about paying someone to shank ola run while he was in jail locked up for operation phoenix and basically put the beef into the forefront of hip-hop lore p5 at the time before his arrest was making major waves but right as his success hit his peak, he dropped a song with Future and everything was going good. But then tragedy struck when homicide rapper R5 took his own life in the studio, allegedly after taking some sort of lace pills. The lace pills on top of losing their close friend, Big Sosa, definitely had a major impact on the group and caused this man to take his own life. Shit just kept getting worse and the henchmen kept dissing R5, Sosa, and everyone all together. And eventually, in another crazy instance, Problem Child 5 was eventually charged for a series of crazy crimes, one of which happened way back in 2019. Apparently, that was the start of a wild streak where a dude was just going around bodying people like this was GTA. You can't even make this up. Into a crime scene and we spent the morning watching detectives work to find the person who killed a man at a gas pump overnight in at Northeast Atlanta. Challenge with Kristen Holloway is live at the Sitco on North End Boulevard where this happened. It's definitely not looking good for P5 with several murders pinned on him. Apparently the police even decided to charge Problem Child 5 with the death of his best friend Sosa, which has many people confused, and members of the henchmen like Benji Bluebells saying that Problem Child basically backdoored Sosa. However, it's much believed that, you know, in a lot of these instances when the police don't really know who is the person responsible for this, and you're basically in the incident as well, this has happened time and time again. The police will put the death of someone who was involved on the person that's still alive. So that doesn't necessarily say that he has something to do with this because that would be crazy. But it seems that members of Homicide Gang have been saying free Problem Child 5. So they believe that he really didn't have anything to do with that. And he apparently said that he left way before or right before this incident occurred. But I believe he just said that to not incriminate himself because the police, for some reason, feel that he was still there in that instance. However, members of henchmen have been busy dissing on the regular, like it's their job. Since saying that Benji Bluebills basically dropped a remix to Cardi Stop Breathing as a response to Cardi that, you know, kind of made some type of waves, as well as dropping a new diss responding to Cardi saying that he's looking for him in the song You're the Moon. It's crazy because that diss has actually gotten a lot of traction and people are just now realizing that Benji Bluebill's music is honestly not bad. And you got people who are fans of both artists, which is honestly crazy if you know the whole background behind this situation. 
It's crazy to believe that all this bloodshed allegedly started from just pettiness and jealousy, but it seems that's how much rap beefs usually start, you know? Something seemingly insignificant can turn into an all-out war when a whole group ends up beefing at the same time as individuals. It's safe to say that the henchmen have pretty much been getting the worst end of this war. Ola Runt, the biggest member, is currently locked in jail with no release date in sight, which basically halted the growth of their group. It would have been crazy if they were able to drop on the regular, but dude has been locked up for mad long now. It's crazy, but the biggest exposure that they've gotten in three years has basically been the beef with Playboy Cardi, which is apparently still keeping them relevant. Meanwhile, Cardi has went and signed with several other members of homicide gangs, like the duo Homicide Gang, currently on Opium's roster. With some of the biggest hits in rap music over the past couple years, it seems like Homicide DTE is getting the furthest in their careers. However, at the same time, the more exposure that Cardi puts on the beef, the more it seems like the police might be tuning into this war as well, which leads us to the next chapter what is going to be the aftermath back almost two years ago when young thugs rico was announced information leaked from da fanny willis office that they were allegedly preparing to enact a rico investigation into dte charges still have never come up and over two years later we have yet to see anyone from dte get arrested Part of the reason for this, in my beliefs, is that the DA's office is having their hands filled with the Young Thug case, which is apparently the most expensive case and longest case in Atlanta history, on top of Fannie Willis recently charging the former President Trump in a RICO indictment as well. In doing so, she basically is putting her career on the line. This might have just bought DTE some much needed time to try to move all their street activity into the realm of legal activity by taking over the music industry and taking a step out of the streets. For everyone's sake, let's hope that this is what is happening. But the amount of disses and back and forth over the years is definitely not a promising sign. It would be crazy to see this situation eventually catching up to Playboy Cardi or Future. But at this rate, honestly, who knows? Look at what happened to Young Thug. It's wild because the beefing is what's actually keeping everyone's career kind of going, you know? It has these audience members and all these fans tuning in and listening to both artists. But at the end of the day, that could be the very thing that takes them out. And like I said before, even George Chitty, a member of the Atlanta press who's been investigating all this, has stated that there is some type of investigation happening. How far it reaches, we really do not know at this time because Fannie Willis, like I said, has currently had her hands tied. But it would be super crazy and not surprising if Playboy Cardi and other members of Homicide Gang are somehow questioned and face retribution for this ongoing stuff that they have been going. But at the same time, there's not really exact proof that Playboy Cardi is going out and doing drills himself. But let's just hope that there's not some sort of money trail leading back to him. Because if there is, you got to be completely fried, bro. They had all this time in advance knowing that there might be a Rico. But, you know, you should learn from your mistakes and learn from the mistakes of others. You see what happened to YSL. You seen what happened to members of 4L. You see way before all this what happened to members of the 5L henchmen that they're basically getting caught up and have been in jail most of them for years now the ones that aren't in jail basically probably just smartened up and decided to take this rap stuff seriously which seems is the only way out because this beefing all that activity is just gonna have you end up like young thug locked up with no release date you know eating sloppy joes posted up eating slop and unidentified food gaining hundreds of pounds you don't want to end up like that having your trial live streamed in front of the whole world and people watching you seeing if you're gonna live or die in prison man it's insane but let's hope for everyone involved that that's not the case because that's not something i want to see 
you know, I don't want to see people dying on the streets, but I don't want to see people locked up in jail for life, especially when they had promising careers that could have went huge lengths. In Playboy Cardi's case, it's kind of crazy to see someone that identified as a not street individual end up turning to the streets after his best friend dies. But that's what it seems like everything happens. And I always preach that you are who you surround yourself with. But you gotta give Cardi credit because coming out of this environment where there's not much going on but death, drugs, and gang violence, he was able to, you know, make a huge wave that touches everyone, even people outside of Atlanta, and tap in and bring people that were from that environment and actively shooters like Homicide Gang that could have been doing something way worse, giving them the opportunity to change their lives and build up and actually become pretty decent rappers themselves. Bro was so influential that he even gave his ops a platform and gave them the ability to diss him back and get a lot of fans that way too. So it's kind of like a weird situation for real if you really think about it. But at the end of the day, if the DA catches up to it, it's all gonna be over, man. But hey, let me know in the comments what y'all think about this situation, man. Do you think that there was more to this beef? Do you think that there's still an ongoing conflict? Or you think that the beef basically cooled down? And what do you think is going to happen with the DA and Homicide Gang when they get questioned? Or if they will get questioned, man. Let me know what y'all think. Real say say shit. Y'all already know what's going on. Like, comment, subscribe. We finna run this up, man. Peace.